order. Uh, if everyone will join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America. and to the Republic, the Republic of which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. Oh, you're back there, Joel. Okay. Anyway, um, with that, we need a motion to approve the minutes of the November 16th meeting. I will make that motion. I'll second it. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And chair votes aye. Financial reports, Joe. Yes, just bringing that up here. So um, <clears throat> for the month of November, you can see an increase in uh, revenue collected compared to last November. And most of that is simply due to the rate increase that went into effect in October. And you can see that trailing down in, in each rate category that was showing. So no real surprise there. Um, a small amount of that was due to increased water usage, but most of that was the rate increase. Um, rate of return is starting to increase, but it, it did start the year down uh, due to just reduced water usage earlier. It should continue to recover. Um, the cash reserves are about where we anticipated. Um, not, a, not a big change there. We do have a large uh, debt service payment that goes out on the 1st of November, which is reflected, and several larger projects that we closed out. Um, otherwise, not any other details there. Uh, Accountant Gutsucker is preparing for the preliminary audit, which starts in December. Um, and that all is uh, virtual this year as well. And that is my summary of the financials for the month. Okay. Um, Superintendent, any questions for Joe on the, on the financials at all? We did approve the the um, vouchers already, correct? I believe we sent oh, we did not have a. We did not have a motion on that, Mark. Okay, I thought we sent that around via email, but no. Yeah, for for review ahead of the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That so, that's correct. So we do need a motion to approve the vouchers. Yeah, I believe it's later in the agenda, Jerry. I'm just looking here, Steve. My copy doesn't show that, but that's um, actually actually I don't see that either on the on the uh, agenda. Okay, I stand corrected on on that one. So we would uh, request a, a formal approval approval of those under the financial report. I will so move. I'll second that. All in favor, say aye. 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 Fair votes aye. Okay. Now the superintendent's report. Um, in distribution, as is normal for November, we started having water main breaks, and you'll see we had four, uh, all prepared by the crew, different location. Well, yeah, pretty pretty widespread locations there. Um, I think the only highlight there, and I might have mentioned it last month, but I, the crew continues to comment on the electronic leak correlator and how effective it is at helping them find <clears throat> the source of the main break and not over excavate and, and trying to find where the water's coming out of the pipe. So that uh, purchase has been very well received. Um, otherwise in distribution, not a lot of other highlights. Uh, uh, a little bit of hydrant maintenance, and that would be the summary for distribution. 
Did we ever get to that uh, spot on North Avenue around 31st Street or whatever that where there was a, a leak and we put a patch in? I think we did, Jerry. I can I can confirm that. Okay. I think that I last time I drove by it was still I don't know if the curb was ever put back in or if the roadway was brought back to where it was. Yeah, I'll double check on that. Then in operations for the month, you, you can see we did pump about 3% more water compared to last year, so that was uh, nice to see. Um, looks like we're going to close out the year with a year-to-date uh, average day of about 11.7 million gallons a day. And you can see that's well down from 2018 when we had a uh, average each day of 13.5. Um, again, I think we're seeing the, the pandemic effect there and, and possibly a trend of some reduced consumption, but uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see on that. Um, we were not able to produce the detailed list of maintenance items for this month, so I can't comment on that. But uh, we did complete the uh, basin sludge cleaning operations and all preparations for the winter months are complete and the plant is in good shape for the winter. And the riprap, is that all taken care of on, um, along the lakefront? We've been monitoring the riprap. It's been holding up. There were a few days of very heavy wave action and it's certainly dispersing that water, you know, taking a lot of the uh, kinetic energy out of it. We do get some splash over, but it doesn't have uh, the punch that it did before when, when we had not made that repair. So I would say the work done by the crew was uh, is holding up nicely and uh, it's good to see. Good, good. All right. And customer relations in fiscal. Yeah, CRNF again, uh, active months. I think, uh, you know, as, as the COVID numbers grew worse, we did close the pay window and you'll see that reflected. We had no activity at the pay window. But that was mostly offset by increase in the drop box and increase in electronic payments. Those are actually, you know, just from an, an efficiency point of view, uh, very efficient ways for us to process payments. So I don't feel like there was a huge loss there, um, but that's what's shown in, in those numbers. Uh, we are seeing fewer calls coming in. Um, we did see a fair amount of property data requests, even more than last year. So people are, those, those tend to come up when people are moving, new, new accounts being set up. Uh, zero complaints filed with the Public Service Commission. Um, I guess uh, another highlight is the amount that we sent to the property tax roll, and this year it's going to be about $114,000, and that's uh, up considerably from prior years, uh, mostly due to the lack of a water disconnection program uh, and, uh, you know, people that were unable to keep up with their water bills and that being uh, allowed this year compared to prior prior years. Uh, anybody have any other questions for Joe on the uh, superintendent's report? None for me. Nope, I'm good. All right, thank you. I would move to approve uh, the superintendent's report. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carried. Okay, moving on on the agenda. Items previously held over for discussion, raw water improvement project. Um, we did uh, execute the, the uh, contract for detailed design and bidding work with CDM Smith. Um, we had a kickoff meeting 
uh, with them for that and laid out the schedule. And you'll recall they're to be completed with detailed design uh, in June of 2021. So it's a pretty ambitious schedule. Um, and uh, we went through that and laid out what they're uh, expecting to do, uh, wrapping up very quickly after the holidays. Um, we, uh, in, in terms of uh, the financing aspect of that project, we kind of completed the determination that the brick, uh, the FEMA Building Resilient Infrastructure Grant Money Program, we really didn't have time to apply for the whole project for that. And also I think because that program's just starting up and the whole project is, is rather large, the, the likelihood of getting funding for that I, I think is pretty low. Um, we did continue to monitor the safe drinking water loan uh, activity and that continues to be supported at a very high level. Uh, we do expect, um, and the Scott Secker is working on that along with uh, Supervisor Swearingen uh, to apply for FEMA brick on the shoreline protection portion of the project. And depending on how extensive we decide to make that, that that's certainly more than a million dollars in cost. And uh, we feel like that's got a little more chance of success in terms of being a, a project to mitigate the uh, damage due to flooding or high, high waters and wave action. So we do hope and plan to, to uh, apply for that um, in hopes of uh, <clears throat> getting some grant monies for that portion of the project. And I think the, the final point, um, I was uh, invited to make a presentation to the committee as a whole in, in January um, and provide a summary of, of the raw water improvement project. Um, and uh, a couple goals in that, I want to be sure the council members and the public fully understand the background of the project, uh, why do we need to do this project? Uh, what is the project looking like? Uh, cost elements, how long it's going to serve the community, and just uh, be sure there's a lot of awareness of everything that's already gone into the project and what we expect to be coming in the next few years. And that will be, uh, I believe, on the, well, the, the date escapes me, the I think it's the second council meeting in, in January uh, that I would be doing that. Have you allotted an hour for you? I'm sorry? Have you allotted an hour for you? I don't know how much time, but probably, <laughs> uh, I'm hoping more of a half hour to 45 minutes, but uh, <laughs> okay. I'll try. I'm pretty good at summarizing, so I'll try to keep it fairly <laughs> brief. That's fine. Joe, could you remind me, is this uh, application we're making, would this be a grant or would this be a loan for the shoreline uh, protection portion? The FEMA brick is a grant, and on that aspect, I believe it's a 75% grant, and then we have to match 25%. Okay. Uh, and, yeah, grant is, is uh, not uh, repair, repayable. So it would be very nice if we can achieve one of those. If we get 75%, that'd be great. Yeah, that would be outstanding. So we're, we're excited about that. You know, it's a nationwide competition. I think in the first year, there's something like $500 million allocated. You know, that's, there's a lot of states and a lot of projects to cover in, with $500 million. But we do feel like we've got... Uh, you know, the mitigation aspect is definitely there because our site that we're building on is low, limited, it is vulnerable to wave action and flooding, and it's a critical piece of infrastructure. Are there any funds to help pay for what we've had to do? For the application portion? Yeah, I mean, the, or even, even beyond that, uh, that grant, is there any other grant money to cover what we've had to do this year when the, the riprap 
basically had to be replaced? Um, not that I'm aware of, Jerry. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, anything else on the raw water improvement project? Not for me, no. Any questions from you, Tom or, or Mark? No, I'm good. Not at this time. Okay, very good. Um, next on the agenda is the request for approval of the uh, purchase of the Georgia Avenue standpipe. It uh, have been actuator, Georgia Avenue standpipe electric actuator. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. I've got, I've got maybe an older version of the, I've got an older version of the agenda, looking at the official one, it does the actuator, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I did want to. preliminary one, I think. Yeah, I had to correct that. This, I is didn't wanna... this is the old one, we're kind of ripping it up, so. <laughs> okay, that was the only correction. But... Yeah, okay. <laughs> I did want to. Uh... Congratulate our distribution and ops uh, personnel and the contractor, Contupus, for doing an uh, outstanding job on getting the Georgia Sandpipe uh, stripped and repainted both inside and outside. Um, if you've seen it, it's a massive improvement in appearance, and some of the neighbors have commented to our staff that they're very happy now with the appearance uh, before it was uh, pretty uh, pockmarked. It had been hit by a lot of, uh, what do you call it, wrist rocket, uh, rock hits from Horace Mann school grounds, we believe. Just uh, an aging coating. And a lot of the footwork that went ahead of that was, you know, taking that that water reservoir, valving it off and, and monitoring our operations and being sure that we could handle the effects of not having that in our system. So, our teams had done a lot of the footwork to be sure that we could operate uh, without it. And in fact, when the time came, it was out of service about two months and I think two to three weeks. And we had no uh, <clears throat> impact and distribution that we were unable to manage. And you can see it, it's a very nice clean appearance now. Uh, the interior coating was failing, and, and that was uh, was a problem. It had ice damage. It was starting to corrode. And one of the other big features is that we've now added a, a mixing unit. So if you imagine that's a, a 2 million gallon water tank, um, before the only action, the uh, water motion would be as water would come in and, and go out. Um, that doesn't create a lot of mixing, and ideally in a in a water tank of that size, you want some mixing uh, to, so that you don't put water in and then remove the freshest water at the same time. So we now have what's called a grid B uh, mixer floating in there and, and achieving some mixing that we're hoping reduces some of the icing in that tank and, and also uh, maintains a little higher chlorine levels than we've seen in that tank in the past. Um, but as part of that project, there was an old, uh, what's called a uh, mechanical altitude valve at the base of that standpipe or, or water reservoir. And that valve operated um, by uh, pressure. So when there was enough water to fill the tank, the pressure of that water would, would uh, push the altitude valve closed so that you couldn't overflow the tank. Um, <clears throat> And the altitude valve in the tank was original and was, was no longer functioning uh, very smoothly. So we decided to remove it. Those are somewhat outdated pieces of infrastructure. So the crew removed that. Uh, and in its place now, we would like to add an actuator to uh, the valve, the inlet valve. So now we can, with an actuator, we can control that uh, valve uh, and mediate the flow of water going in uh, and out of the tank. Uh, if we were to have a major problem and wanted to shut the tank off, we could do that very quickly and remotely from the water treatment plant. 
So this uh, electric actuator uh, would be going on the existing valve and, and giving us those capabilities. And we've now added those to the Tail Hill Reservoir and the Double E Reservoir as well. Be well, eighty-four hundred dollars well spent, in other words. Yes, definitely. And we're staying with the Alma actuators, so yeah, common, common technology our, that we're familiar with. Yep, that's our go-to. We've been very happy with the maintenance and and longevity of those units. Yeah, I'm all in favor of that idea. Is that a motion? Sure. <laughs> motion to approve the uh, proposal. I'll second it. I'll second it. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Sure, we'll say motion carried. All right. Next we've got uh, the COVID leave carryover. Um, request to carry over the remaining leave until June 15th for uh, vaccination. Um, am I correct? Yeah. I guess just to remind the board, not long after the, the uh, pandemic uh, began, there was federal law establishing um, what's called COVID leave for specific purposes. And the board uh, determined to exceed that in, in some ways, uh, partly because we wanted the flexibility to protect staff and maintain our, our critical service and not have a, an unknown virus at that time kind of rush through our operation and, and uh, threaten our ability to produce water for the community. Um, it's worked very well. The majority of that leaf has been used for staff members who have children in school that were forced to homeschool and needed a parent home with them. Um, that's been by far the majority of the usage of that leaf. Some employees haven't used any at all uh, it has been used for those employees who have had COVID uh, in cases where a staff member had a primary contact with somebody with COVID and in cases where we felt we needed to isolate people to protect our operations and uh, not bring them into the workplace in a few instances. But I think uh, my request here would be, you know, numbers are still high in the county I think we're all hoping those continue to come down, but I, I don't think uh, the problem is going to be eliminated at the end of the year. So I would request the flex flexibility of carrying that leave over, which has been maintained uh, on our books uh, very, very precisely for those staff members that may need to use it in the coming months uh, or until uh, till June 15th, or hopefully if there's a vaccine that's widely available to uh, our personnel earlier than that. We are considered in the second category of uh, CDC uh, vaccine distribution. So the first category is medical staff, elderly, uh, I may be missing some of the second category is essential workers, and as defined, as defined by CDC, that includes utility workers uh, and many other workers. It's a very large category. So we have, we have no idea when we're going to see any vaccinations available for utility workers in a, in a separate group. Uh, but hopefully it'll be sooner than June 15th. And, but I, I felt like if we don't do this formally, then we're a little bit left uh, unclear how we might handle the outbreak if it were to become worse after Christmas or uh, just not wind down as quickly as everyone is hoping. A couple of the things that I've seen are saying that the, uh, the essential workers may very well, uh, might be available to essential workers as early as February. Which would be ideal. That would be awesome. I think once it becomes available, then, you know, my feeling is that this uh, leave would uh, 
be taken off the books at that point. N none of it is paid out in addition to anything beyond the purposes it was set out for. Do we, do we have a specific plan as far as the people in the, in the, in the utility, employees in the utility, as far as um, either requiring them to get, get vaccinated or um, yeah, pecking order within the utility? Uh, we don't, and I think, you know, from what I've gathered, mandatory vaccination is, is um, challenging to enforce. I think, uh, you know, we're hopeful that most of our staff members would, would uh, become vaccinated and that that would give us a, a lot uh, reduced risk to any, you know, widespread exposure in, in the utility. We have had several members that have uh, staff members who have tested positive. So we do have some folks that have had the virus. And my hope is that when the vaccination becomes available, you know, most of our folks would, would get that vaccination and, and that our risk to a widespread outbreak at that point comes very, very low. Okay. All right, uh, we need a motion to um, carry over re any remaining COVID leave as determined previously until um, June 15th, um, according to Joe's request. Any questions? First of all, is there a second before a comment? A what was there a motion? I made the motion. Yep. You made the motion, okay. Um, the only thing I would, Add, and I don't even know if this is that important, but I heard a story on, on uh, public radio today. They're talking about mandatory vaccinations for healthcare workers. And uh, the doctor that they were interviewing was saying with this conditional use vaccine or this emergency authorization for that vaccine, even for those healthcare workers, they can't mandate the use of the virus. So that probably, that yeah. That for the vaccine, vaccine. yes, ex yes, okay. excuse me. So, um, I think that we're going to have some time left in this crisis before we're out of this. So I would second the motion. Any other comments, Tom? No, I'm good, I'm for this. That's somewhat from what I have heard, I think it was yesterday that um, uh, the, um, the logic there is once we have 75% of people vaccinated, um, you know, that the other 25, at least at that point, they would con consider dropping the term pandemic um, because if 75% of the population had been vaccinated, there still would be outbreaks, but not, not as severe. Oh. Anyway, motion is second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Fair votes aye. All right. That motion is carried. Uh, renewal of workman's comp insurance policy. Uh, so we have a renewal quote from uh, <clears throat> accident funds through Hub, our local uh, office broker. And I, I would only say the, uh, the premiums are by state statute uh, based on uh, our industry and our, uh, our mod or our uh, kind of our safety assessment. And our mod has been very good. Uh, the part that is a little bit different between companies would be the dividends that are paid if you don't have claims you see the dividend uh, table laid out here is uh, very high, 35%. Um, we have worked with accident funds for many years in, in various ways, and I would have uh, no, only a positive recommendation on working with accident fund for our workers' comp along with Hub out of Sheboygan. I would move to approve. Is there a second? 
Yes, second. Any comments, by the way? I'm just kind of curious how how the uh, how the uh, policy cost this year compares to last time we renewed. Approximately keeping up with inflation, or I mean, I'm not looking for a scientific response. I'm just curious. Um. I know I specifically asked uh, the accountant that question, Mark. I'm scrambling back. I know it was <clears throat> less than a 5% increase, if that. Okay. okay. And the other thing is because th these are set by the state, um, you really you really don't have the option of going to a different company or, or anything like that because the state is, is setting those rules based on the, uh, the vocation itself on the, the the, the, the clerical is different than someone working on the crew and that stuff and it's based on dollars worth of payroll so if the payroll goes up yeah the premium will go up a little bit uh, unless the rates come down but those rates are spread over the entire state and the um, basically the, the experience rates within those categories So that was a second, Mark? Yes. A second? Okay. Uh, the move and second. All in favor say aye. 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 And it's aye. Motion carried. Uh, last item under items for discussion and action draft of the health insurance strategic plan. An update. I wanted to just uh, <clears throat> take the board back a little bit uh, early, earlier this year. Um, I believe it was July, we had uh, engaged Anthony Fioretti, who does uh, consulting on health insurance plans. And Mr. Fioretti's goal is to develop more of a strategy, not just a year by year, well, change this, you know, and see what happens. He uh, kind of takes what I'd loosely describe as a holistic approach. Um, and in doing that, he began meeting with myself and Scott Sucker and the utilities health insurance broker um and his initial goals was to understand the, the plan that has been in place at the utility uh where it came from you know with the, the board's intentions over the years and, and maintaining it as a key part of uh, our employment package and then looking starting to look at the details of the local market uh, he's out of uh, Milwaukee area, but he works in Sheboygan County, so it's uh, positive. He's not comparing us to Kansas City or something. He's very much looking at our local market. Um, uh, several meetings amongst that group of four to kind of flesh out where do we, what do we think is important to the staff about the health plan? How do we want to keep it? Uh, how do we see it in the future as part of our employment package? Um, and then uh, based on all that input from us, Mr. Fioretti developing some something of a plan going forward. And I would remind the board that our relationship with him is a, a three-year contract. So this is not, a, again, a all in one year kind of, kind of thing. Um, so we did receive a draft document from him laying out some details, showed our benchmarks compared to other very uh, comparable entities in terms of what the employees contribute to premium, the benefits, um, prescription uh, contributions as well. And he made really uh, three uh, recommendations at this point. The first is a, a private clinic option. And he, uh, what he's talking about there is a, a fairly new concept where a clinic has uh, physicians that develop more of a one on one relationship with the patient and can do more than just kind of be a a feed through to other services. Um, <clears throat> one example is a, a group called Palladium. There are other examples, uh, you know, in our market as well. I, I wouldn't want to uh, 
I only singled them out because uh, we did get some information on them and spoke with them, but there are certainly other providers uh, in the same market, Prevea uh, and some others. Um, <clears throat> so he's recommending that we at least pursue that option and, and what it might do to um, allow our people to get more focused uh, and, and quicker appointments. My understanding is that appointments are actually with a physician and within uh, one or two days, not not the type of clinic where you see a, a, a medical staff that are that are more limited in their background and, and prescription ability and, and training, but uh, uh, a type of clinic where you're seeing a physician-based approach. Um, the second option that he thinks is worth considering is a health reimbursement account. And these have become, you know, pretty pretty common. In our case, the health reimbursement account, uh, the monies are stay with the employer, uh, but the staff members have incentive to, you know, use their dollars wisely because they receive a certain amount uh, pre-tax uh, for uh, their benefits, and, and if they use them wisely, they last longer is my, my simple approach to HRA that he uh, is also recommending that we start looking at. Um, the third idea is what's called a stop-loss captive. And um, just for a little background, our, the utilities health insurance plan is self-insured, uh, and what that means is that we buy coverage for large claims and the utility pays the claims below that coverage um, limit or stop loss limit as it's called. <clears throat> and one of the things we found is that uh, the amount of quotes we're getting on our fairly small group for stop loss coverage has, has um, been decreasing year by year so stop loss captive is a way to, to join others in getting quotes on, on multiple stop loss packages rather than just one employer at a time. That's my basic understanding. I'm still uh, learning about these as well. But those are the three areas that he has singled out in our first round of uh, uh, evaluation. At, at this point in time, I just offer those um, at, in a, on an advisory basis. Uh, he hasn't sought quotes for any of those. He hasn't uh, done anything beyond simply evaluate our uh, our plan in, in great detail and confer with us. And those are the three primary recommendations that have come out. And um, you know, the follow-up would be in 2021 to start looking at those in, in more detail um, and to provide real scenarios where for the board's consideration of possible changes in, in each or all of those categories or none of those categories if at the end of the day they don't seem to be a, a beneficial for the plan. So I think at, at this point, I just wanted to give kind of an update on on uh, what's come out of the planning sessions that we've had, and and the draft document is there for your review. And uh, I guess uh, that's what I wanted to present <clears throat> at today's meeting. Anybody have any specific questions about the materials that Bill provided? Not at this time. The document that we were provided earlier is quite in depth, quite right. deep. So I appreciate the summary, Joel. Tom, how about you? I'm good. I'm good yeah. No, I read I read the document, and yeah, it's, I agree with Mark. It's very uh, detailed. Yeah. It's definitely going to need a professional to explain all the different things and the yeah. benefits and exactly. detriments of the, of that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so we'll look forward to uh, an update on that in the future as we're going along. Next on the agenda, personnel items. Any personnel items, Joe? Uh, no, there was nothing this month. 
except wishing everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and uh, just Happy Holidays in general. That's right. I'm assuming there's no no Christmas get together or holiday get together at the utility. Uh, no, not this year. Unfortunately. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> All right. Next meeting. Unless there's anything else that I have missed. Next meeting, third Monday of January, would be the 18th. Yep. Sounds good. Is that okay for everybody, Joe, on your end? Yes, that's good. Okay. And we'll set that for January 18th. Um, 3.30 again on uh, the third Monday. I'll just say 2021. For some reason, it's just... I know the years are going really, really fast. But we don't want another 2020, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right, with that, we've got one other item on the agenda, and that's the motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs> I'll second it. All right, motion carried. Anything Take else? Care. Take care of your family, Joe.